Hey everybody, it's Morgan Debon, CEO of Blavity Inc., creators of Shadow and Act. We are so excited today to bring you this incredible conversation. I'm joined by Megan Good, a fan favorite, a Shadow and Act favorite. Megan, it's so good to chat with you today. We have a few things that we're going to cover, um, but first let's just start with how you doing today. I'm doing good today. I'm doing good today. I'm enjoying the time off um, in between projects and just kind of getting my rest, which has been great because this year... I worked from January till September without a break. So I was like, hey. I hear how that. are you? I'm feeling good. I'm excited for Sundance. Bummed we're not all in person, but excited that we're able to still convene and have this dialogue together. There's so many incredible projects. So I'm pumped to hear more about the project that you directed. Um, but first, let's start off with just like more recently, you have been working a lot, both, of course, in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. Let's start with in front. Um, like many, many people watching this, I watched Harlem, which was incredible. We loved the Afrotech shout outs multiple times. Uh, <laughs> I got so many DMs and texts of people like, did you hear it? I'm like, oh, did I hear it? <laughs> um, and the other thing that I really loved about the show was just how um, unapologetically Black woman it was. It like really felt like, okay, this is different. You know, I know that a lot of times people try to remake the kind of girlfriends of the past. I'm like, all right, but this is like really more progressive um, in terms of women first conversations, topics, um, and even just the gender kind of sexuality spectrum. So I'm curious from your perspective, what the Harlem project really meant for you. And one of the reasons, like, why did you pick um, this? Because I'm sure you get so many different projects to work on. Oh, man. Uh, Harlem, I fell in love with it, just straight off of what you were saying, uh, unapologetically Black women and showing our stories and things that we never get to talk about on camera and then not just talk about them, but actually explore them and kind of go down the rabbit hole and follow these characters. And then I fell in love with Camille, you know, I fell in love with each one of the characters differently because none of them felt um, monolithic. None of them felt like caricatures. They felt like girls that I actually really, really know in my friend group. And so um, in reading it, falling in love with Camille's character, I'm like, man, this is a character that I haven't got a chance to play. And I am more kind of Camille in my friend group. You know, there's pieces, I think, of all of us in each one of the characters. But um, I really am like kind of quirky and offbeat and like a little bit of like a nerd and like, you know, can be like overconfident, but then insecure and like all those things. And so um, when I went in for it and we met on it and then I ultimately tested for it with Grace and Jerry and Shaniqua. I was like, man, I have to get this part, you know? And I think initially, I think that they weren't really sure if I was the girl, you know, because they hadn't seen me play this character before. Right. And so um, when, after I went in, I didn't hear anything for like two weeks. And I was just like, what is going on? And then they called and they said that I got it. And I actually cried because, you know, TV for me is it's it's always a little bit scary because it's such a huge commitment. You know, you go to a movie, you might be one month, two months, three months, you might even be five months, but it's over after that. And you go on to the next project and, you know, and I like being a bit of like a nomad and never knowing where I'm going to be next, never knowing what character I'm going to play or what country I'm going to be in. And so anytime that I do TV, it's because I've made a decision that if I end up living in this space for years, I'll be really happy here. And that's mm -hmm. what Harlem is to me. And it represents like, not just sisterhood on the show, but there's a real sisterhood behind the scenes yeah. and real like family vibes and like unapologetically black. And it's just a, it's a place that I love, love living. And I love spending to me, it's never just about the job. It's about quality of life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and my quality of life on Harlem is pretty, pretty freaking epic. So. That's beautiful. I'm happy to hear that for you. And um, yeah. tell me about for Camille, you said you're kind of a nerd, kind of quirky. What are some things that you nerd out about? Well, I'm definitely the girl that everyone, like, if I tell a joke, everyone's like, Megan. You know, <laughs> no, just, you know so I'm, I've always been that girl. Yeah. Um, what do I nerd out on? Uh, music. I love old music. I love old R&B. I love old rock music. Um, I love DJing, like my friends' parties, and like we just came back from Cabo for um, my my girlfriend Renisha's birthday, and I DJed like while we were on the yacht, and I DJed, and we went to like the fireside um, 
bonfire and stuff. And what else? I love karaoke. I love singing really? all of those songs. Um, I'm not, I mean, I can hold a note, but you know, it, it, yeah, but well, I love it. Like, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I said, we won't see you on Broadway anytime soon. <laughs> you know what? If there was an opportunity, I would do it, you know, because okay. I think, it, you know, it's not just the singing. It's also like the performing and the commitment. So, you yeah. know, as long as you can hold a note, I, I might be all right. That's awesome. Um, one of the things that I really admire about you is your faith and how much you really do walk in your purpose every single day. Um, how do you feel like your purpose as an artist and a human has played a role in the stories that you choose to bring to life as an actress and, and you know, now as a director as well? Yeah, um, I think... It's interesting because, you know, there's, I'm always thoughtful and prayerful anytime I take on something, you know, mm -hmm. and it's always for different reasons. Sometimes it's because I think the character's journey is important and someone needs to see it. Sometimes I think that the character's demise and the lesson in it is important and we need to see it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just something that I creatively am excited about and haven't got a chance to do or something that I know that will challenge me. Um, and so it's, it's always different reasons, but ultimately why I act in general, I do love it very much. Um, but there's been seasons where I'm like, eh, and so I feel like, you know, especially now as I'm getting older, I think I'm, I'm so much more selective because again, it is quality of life and it is, you know, you are on location and you're away from your family and your nieces and your nephews and all those things. And so, um, I'm selective in the sense of like, I act because I do love it, but I also act so that I can have a platform so that I can build the kingdom so that I can be usable in the kingdom yes. so that um, God can use me however he wants to use me. And I, and I have a platform to be used that way mm -hmm. um, that that's unique to me. And then, um, yeah, it just, it just depends, but it always plays a role in it because my faith is first and foremost above everything. Always. And, you know, I think there's a lot of women who maybe struggle with balancing their faith and the opportunities that come their way. How have you been able to set boundaries and actually be able to continue to live in your purpose? Um, like, what advice would you give to an actress that's coming up that's like, yeah, that's, that's where I want to be, but like, there's these opportunities that don't match with where I want to be? Well, I think sometimes opportunities match a little bit more than we realize because um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we um, have faith and we believe in Jesus or whatever we believe in we can tend to get a little religious and sometimes we don't ask God you know there's been characters roles that I've played that in my first thought I was like oh I don't know and then I prayed about it and I felt like God was like yes go ahead and I'm mm -hmm. like okay and then when I got on the other side of it then I realized why he had me do it you know, mm -hmm. and then um, there are times where, you know, you know, it's not the right thing and you want to do it. And I just make an executive decision. I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to do this. And I'm trusting you're going to bring something better. And he does mm -hmm. every single time. And, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says, uh, seek you the kingdom first and all these things shall be added to you. So when you put God first and when you seek his will first, everything else that you want will be added to you the right way for you specifically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's never worth compromising no matter what, because, you know, God is the goal. You know, God is the reason for the season, the reason that we're here, the one who's going to give us everything that we need, the one who's not going to let us down, the one that's always going to be mm -hmm. by our side. And so um, when you do things with him in mind first and when you pray and you ask him, you know, what does he want you to do or what, what would he have you do? Everything else falls in line. Everything else falls in line and it never fails. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, let's talk a little bit about your move to be behind the camera. Um, and this wasn't your first project, right? I mean, this was like your third or fourth thing that you've directed. So before yeah. we get into current, talk to me about like, what was your first opportunity as a director? Um, and kind of what was your energy like? What was that first project and how did you make the decision to step behind the camera? Um, well, I've been doing a lot of producing. And yeah. I started producing when I was about 24, just trying to figure out what the heck I was doing. I'll never forget when I was about 19, I did a, a talk show in San Diego and they were like, well, what else do you want to do? I was like, I want to produce and da, 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 da. They're like, well, what does a producer do? And I was like, 
<laughs> and I actually didn't know. So then at 20, around 24, I just started setting out and, and I would always ask for help or ask questions. But, um, you know, oftentimes when you're a woman, people don't, you know, take you seriously. And when you're a black woman, people don't always take you seriously. And when you're a black woman, that's an actress. They're like, just be an actress, you know, leave the business right. stuff to the guys, you know? And so I basically had to teach myself and, you know, made mistakes along the way, but figured things out along the way, figured out what my gifting was, which is a majority of the time problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, but so I started producing and when my cousin had just come off the TV show Glee and he was like, look, I really want to start my, my singing career. And he was like, I want to direct a video. Um, will you help me produce it? And I was like, sure. So I'm putting the video and everything together. And I was like, this is the guy I think we should have directed. He's really, really great. And he yeah. was like, well, what if he's not available? I was like, we'll work it out. If he's not available, I'll direct it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> he wasn't available. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, my cousin Dijon was like, so you're going to direct it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so I get there and I'm like, terrified like I literally feel like I'm gonna throw up I'm like oh my god my cousin's putting so much money into this video and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to figure it out but I don't know and as soon as I started putting the pieces together I realized I was like I do know what I'm doing I know exactly what I've been doing I've been watching this my entire life I've been even if just as an actress like suggesting to the director like hey well what if we did this because I think this would actually pull this together and this would make this moment easier so when she comes down the hallway then you know da 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 da, da. and so I realized instantly not only did I know what I was doing but it was something that I was already kind of doing you know in mm -hmm. in a further back position and so um directed the music video was really, really, really proud of it. It's mm -hmm. called Wild Out. And um, and then after that, people just started asking me, you know, Israel Halton and Erica Campbell and Ricky Bell. And like, I just started mm -hmm. directing music videos. Um, and then I did a short film and then I did my first feature film. So me and my friend Tamara Bass directed it together. She wrote it. We both produced it. We both starred in it. We both directed it and she wrote it. And I don't know, but I... I think, I don't think that's ever been done before by two black women, but, um, we did it. Um, we sold it to vertical and now it's on, on demand, Apple TV, you could pretty much watch it anywhere, but, um, super, super proud of it. And I love directing so much. I love it so much. That's absolutely incredible. I, um, haven't watched that and I'm going to have something to watch tonight. Yay. <laughs> so tell me about your more recent opportunity. How did this come about? And, um, you know, I think it's the relationship with LOL, Women Right Now initiative brought to you by Sundance. And just tell me a little bit about the program and um, how it came about and also for the, the viewers that are listening now. Yeah. Um, well, you know, brainchild of, of Kevin Hart and um, Jeff Flanagan and, um, Candace Cherry, just like, you know, that whole kind of family over there. And they thought, you know, black women have stories to tell and we need to not just have more opportunities for black actresses, but we need to have more opportunities for black women in all areas and all arenas. And with writing, that's an area where, you know, we haven't gotten as much exposure or support or whatever it may be. And so they decided to create this initiative where any woman in the world, if you are a writer, you can submit a short film, which is about 10 to 13 pages long. And we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of submissions. Wow. And then they kept narrowing it down, narrowing it down. And then we read through a bunch of them. And when it came down to like the last few runners up, then we picked which ones we wanted to do. And um, I, like right off the top, picked um, Black Karen by Danielle Nicolette. And I was just like, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. And so I was trying to figure out for the longest time, I'm like, who's going to be my black Karen? And I first <laughs> thought of it probably the first day. And I thought, no, 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 because she was directing one as well. Yeah. And I was like, she probably is not going to do it. But then I was like, it has to be her. It has to be Brisha Webb. And so I asked Brisha, I'm like, girl, will you be my black Karen? She was like, yeah. And so um, got into it. Cedric the Entertainer came, um, my good friend. Catherine Lanasa, we put together like a really beautiful cast of like faces you've seen and faces you haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really proud of it. And, and I've never directed comedy before. I Drama is a safe space for me. And mm -hmm. so uh, I trust all my instincts there. With comedy, as I said, I'm the person who tells a joke and everyone's like, make me go. 
just don't do it, girl. <laughs> so I, I was a little bit nervous. But what I realized is, um, and I think I really realized this through Harlem, mm -hmm. is that everybody's brand of comedy is different. Mm -hmm. And everybody's funny in their own way. And when you lean into what your brand is and you trust those insti instincts and you're authentic, yeah. it is going to relate to somebody, you know, translate to someone. And I think with Harlem, I didn't realize uh, that I was funny. Like I kind of knew, but I wasn't sure. I was like, I hope this works. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, um, and then to get like positive feedback and then for people to watch the show and love the character and love the characters. I was yeah. like, okay, 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 okay. I'm just going to go for it. So, um, yeah, black hair, and I'm I'm very proud of it, and I'm looking forward to people getting a chance to see it. I literally was like DMing my team, like, so do I get to see it early? <laughs> They're like, no, you have to <laughs> like everyone else. It's like, damn. So tell us what Black Karen is about um, and uh, just so that everyone can head and see it after they watch our interview. Yeah, yeah it's um, <laughs> Black Karen is exactly what you would think. It's a Black <laughs> Karen. <laughs> and um, it has a lot of social commentary. And what I love about comedy is that you can say some very, very real things, but because of how you say them, it can be very disarming, mm. but it also can be received without being offensive. Or if it's offensive, you can still laugh at it, but you're like, wait, hold on. That's actually true though, Loki. Right. Loki high key. So um, Danielle wrote a really beautiful script and she put all these like kind of golden nuggets in there and all these moments that translate to, you know, if this was a white woman, how she would be treated versus if it was a black woman with the same feelings of entitlement that this particular character has. Mm -hmm. And um, we played several different beats and several different things going on. And so it's, it's really interesting and it's really smartly done. And the word play that she used and the approach, it just really makes you think like that is deep. There's only one difference here in these moments, only one. And it's the fact that she's black, Yeah, you know? And so um, I love the social commentary and I think Danielle did a beautiful job and Brisha did a beautiful job. And so I can't wait to see it and watch all the <laughs> themes and us be like, I'm going to be a black Karen today because I'm sure there's plenty of moments <laughs> where we're like, I would like to be entitled. Right. Like her. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should be so interesting. Um, on the technical front, like as a director, what do you think is one of the, some of the skill sets that you brought for, as an actress to the director role? And you know, for those folks who are considering, like, mm -hmm. how do I how do I also make the switch and have the be a multi hyphenate and not just be pigeonholed into well, you're just an actor. Like this is what you do. You can't be a producer. Mm -hmm. You can't be a director. What's your advice for them as well? Screw those people who are saying that. <laughs> and all you got to do is put one foot in front of the other. And you're not always going to know what you're doing. Ask questions, do research. But the best way to get it done is just to do it. And, yeah. you know, start moving in that direction every single day. And um, and trust your instincts, you know. It's, to me, one of the truest things is that these are your instincts. Nobody else has them because nobody else is you. So what you bring is unique and special and only you can bring it and so trusting that about yourself to me that is like the superpower and trusting god and just being like all right let's go for it um but at the end of the day for me i just had to just figure it out as i went along and as long as you keep moving you mm -hmm. will get it done and you'll look up eventually and be like oh my god i did that that's crazy you know even yeah. if you don't have a lot of help or support just keep moving forward and it will bring itself full circle and you will blow your own mind. Yeah. I mean, I definitely always encourage people to just, to start, you know, and it doesn't have to be the official, you know, your, your first project's not going to be at Sundance necessarily. Right. right. But just like you're saying, you started with a music video. Okay, cool. What are the yeah. projects people can just do with their friends and the people in their network that they grew up with, that they went to school with. Um, I always encourage people to just get up and go and, you know, and yeah. not have permission. Um, this one day the and age too, you, you, you can pull out your phone. Like the, the, there's movies, there are whole movies. I think there's one that's up for um, an Oscar this year, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, or some type of award this year that was shot on. No, you know what it was? It was that, it was the, I think it was the Florida Project. 
Oh or yeah. Like that. But mm-hmm. it was shot on a cell phone. Really? The entire movie. A and lot of the pandemic made a lot of creative things. And that's the blessing too, because it's like, yeah, the pandemic was horrible and is horrible, yeah. but there's so many other things that can come out of the worst times. And one of them is learning how to be creative and keep going and figure out, you know, problem solve. When everyone else says no, say yes and figure out how to do it, you know, and that will be part of your superpower. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk just briefly about um, just the shift that you're seeing. I mean, you've been in the game for a really long time. So you've seen the shift with digital and all these OTT platforms. How do you see technology and new platforms that have been rolling out and even just the increase in budgets from like an Amazon, you know, out of nowhere, Amazon's doing all these incredible projects, of course, Netflix. So what have you seen um, that has made an impact on the diversity of content and also the financing that's going to women and black women specifically in the industry. It's our time. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was thinking about 10 years ago, um, I did this show deception and it was the first time in my entire career you know, where, and and 10 years ago, I had already been in the business like 20 something years, something like that. And I was like, this is the first time I look around and Gabrielle is a star of her own show. Taraji is a star of her own show. Mm Viola is a star of her own show. Carrie is a star of her own show. I had never seen anything like that before. And I didn't realize that I had never seen it before. Um, And, and what these shows are, you know, diverse, Mm -hmm. just unique, just different like storylines, Um, and so that was the first time I started noticing that there was a shift happening. Um, and it's been like a slow crawl and it, and it has been, you know, um, Mm -hmm. but that was identifying for me specifically, but, um, now you're seeing us being supported more. We still have to fight for it. We still have to have those conversations. We still have to point out stuff that isn't right. We still have to get us in positions that's you know, not just acting or writing, not just directing, but also producing and studio heads and people who are real decision makers on these things. But you see people being a lot more open. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these things happen because they're trendy or they're a moment. The good thing with this is that, and the good thing about us is if you give us a moment, maybe we're not going to let go. We're going to push through, you know? (laughs) And so um, you see that really, really happening. and, And we are starting to get that support And, um, you know, as long as we continue to do what we're doing, which we will, because we have so much original content, you know, it was interesting listening to to Tracy Oliver say um, before she did Girls Trip, Mm. she had did Harlem. She had created Harlem before Girls Trip and she tried to sell it around town. And they said to her, yeah, but it's like, like black women friendship. Like, is that like a thing though, that like you can build a show around and people want to watch. And she was like, but you can do it with friends and you can do it with this and you can do it with that. And you're, you know, and they were just like, I don't know. And so girls trip came out and of course made, you know, a hundred million dollars. And then all of a sudden, you know, we started seeing more of these shows. Mm -hmm. And so, um, not to say that that's the reason, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that played a huge role, you know, girls trip, just showing like, yes, we want to Mm -hmm. see these things. We Mm want to see ourselves this way. This is who we are. And not just us, people want to see us this way. Everyone can relate to this. Yeah. And it's secure. I think Um, two of those, it's like, and they can coexist. It's fine. We'll watch. Exactly. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And that's the thing too, is like, you know, with, with as many friend group shows that are coming out, you know, it's it's almost like people want to take the stance of like, well, there's only four women in the world who can represent every right. single black woman's experience. Right. That's not true. There are so many different diverse black women from different walks of life with different mm-hmm. personalities with different life experiences. We need more than just one show. Yes. We need a few just like everybody else. Right. You know, so, um, yeah, it's it's you definitely see the shift and it's a beautiful thing. And I think we'll continue to keep grabbing hold and introducing new things. And, you know, our only other job is to show up for each other. You yeah. know, even if it's not your favorite show or necessarily thing you want to watch, turn your TV on anyway. Let the episode play yes. while you're getting dressed, whatever. Just support it so that we can continue to make it. Yeah. And I think that's one thing about black women is we're going to show up. You know, we are definitely going to be loud. And I I love that about our culture and about our sisterhood. Um, So one final question before we wrap up. 
what are you working on next? Can you give us a peek on what we should expect this year in 2022? It's been uh, a crazy couple of years with the pandemic. Like you said, you've been busy, booked and busy last year. So what are you looking forward to? (laughs) Um, So this year I have a film coming out with Jamie Foxx and um, Snoop Dogg and uh, Dave Franco. And it is called Day Shift. And it's a, a vampire slang comedy. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, for me, it's bucket list. I was just like, all I want to do is be in a vampire movie. I'm like a 90s kid. Like, that's all I want, you know? Yeah. Um, really, really what I want is to be is to be the female version of Blade. But Ooh. we'll see. We'll see what God says. But, um, but yeah, so the movie is, it's great. And it's fun and Jamie's fantastic in it. And like, it's so, yes, that's this year. And then um, I did the Shazam part two, which is really, really really cool and a lot of fun. Um, And that'll be out 2023. And then we are still waiting to hear if we're going back for season two of Harlem, but I'm believing God that we are. And, and then we'll see. And then there's a few things I'm, kicking around that I might be directing and I'm going to decide if I'm going to do that right before I go back to Harlem or not. But yeah, just good things. And they, all of us by the grace of God, and I'm just so thankful and appreciative. So, yeah. Well, I wish you nothing but the most success in life and happiness mm-hmm. and all of your projects are incredible. I cannot wait to support you, uh, Sundance. Thank you so much for having us. Shadow and Act is a very proud sponsor this year, our first year as an official sponsor, which is a good milestone for us as a company. And um, everyone, watch Black Karen and tweet about it. So <laughs> thank you for joining us. It. <laughs> I want that to be a thing. Black Karen, we got to tweet about it. Let's do it. All right, everybody, <laughs> we'll catch you on the internet. See you soon. Okay, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me.